Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqeed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a Sakhir Palace yesterday in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis, who is currently visiting Bahrain. His Majesty welcomed the U.S. Secretary of Defense and the accompanying delegation and reviewed with them prospects of enhancing the historic relations between the two countries, affirming that these relations are based on mutual respect and trust, as well as cooperation and coordination in all fields. His Majesty the King held the strategic relations and close partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States of America, and the progressing bilateral cooperation and progress in all fields, especially with regard to military and defense coordination, as friends and allies bonded with deep historical ties. His Majesty expressed his pride in working together in many noble tasks for peace and security in the region. His Majesty underlined the role of the U.S. administration along with the coalition and friendly states in enhancing peace and security in the region and maintaining international peace, noting Bahrain's support to these efforts. His Majesty the King affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is on the path of development, modernization and progress in all fields and expressed his pride in the spirit of solidarity, cohesion, and respect for all religions and sects. His Majesty praised the role played by the American community in Bahrain and its contributions in all fields to the history of Bahrain and that they welcome the people of Bahrain with respect. For his part, the U.S. Secretary of Defense expressed his appreciation for His Majesty's efforts to strengthen relations of friendship and mutual cooperation, praising the role of the Kingdom of Bahrain as an important partner in supporting and promoting regional and global peace and stability. During the meeting, they exchanged views on topics of mutual interest as well as the events in the region. His Majesty the King hosted a dinner in honor of the U.S. Secretary of Defense and his accompanying delegation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the first batch of graduates of the Public Management, rather Management Master's Program. The meeting comes within His Royal Highness's keenness on developing programs that contribute in raising professional, administrative and performance efficiency. The graduation ceremony of the first batch of the program was held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince recently, which was attended by Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khaled bin Abdullah Al Khalifa on His Royal Highness's behalf. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at a fire palace yesterday the U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince commended the strategic Bahraini-U.S. relations in light of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa 
and the President of the United States, Donald Trump. His Royal Highness noted the cooperation between the two countries and their military alliances, which contributed effectively to maintaining the peace and security in the Middle East. He also hailed their joint commitment to cooperate with other friendly and brotherly countries to face all challenges at the forefront of which is terrorism. The meeting also discussed issues related to defense and military cooperation and coordination between the two countries. In line with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa's keenness on communicating with all the people of Bahrain, His Royal Highness received at his weekly majlis at Rafa'a Palace, members of the royal family, ministers, members of the representative and shura councils and municipalities, a number of clergymen, diplomatic corps members, academic, intellectual and media characters, as well as a number of community members. His Royal Highness welcomed the guests at his majlis, which embodies the communication principle that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is keen to maintain. The guests hailed the keenness of His Royal Highness to meet with citizens and communicate with them, and the connecting platform the majlis represents, which embodies the true Bahraini identity, noting the efforts of the leadership in enhancing the foundations of sustainable development to further achieve progress and prosperity for the kingdom.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa inaugurated yesterday the third edition of Art Bahrain Across Borders Fair, Art BAB 2018, held under the patronage of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Princess Abika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. His Royal Highness noted that the comprehensive development witnessed by Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa focuses on the cultural aspects and encourages art and creativity. The Kingdom honors such artists in recognition of their efforts that promoted Bahrain as a touristic, cultural and artistic destination. His Royal Highness hailed the efforts of Her Royal Highness, Princess Sabika and support of the fair and for holding the event annually in Bahrain to exchange experiences and promote the work of Bahraini artists. He praised the Bahraini artist's ability to present the history of Bahrain in a modern way. His Royal Highness praised the efforts exerted in organizing the fair, which includes the participation of Bahraini artists in addition to selection of international artists. The Art Bahrain Across Borders program includes a number of educational lectures, musical performances, and workshops for children.
International artists and galleries gathered from across the globe to be part of the Art Fair Art Bob 2018. The event interacts with the arts from all over the world, as well as local Bahraini artists who embrace Bahrain's cultural heritage and its rich history. Art Bob uh, provides an invaluable platform for me as an artist personally, for Bahraini artists in general and for um, international artists to come to Bahrain and show what they have to offer. Um, you know, every year it gets better and better. Every year the participation increases and more people come to know about it and come to want to come and uh, exhibit here in Bahrain. And it's a, a matter of pride for me personally as a Bahraini that uh, this art fair is gaining residence and, and, and you know, gaining importance in the art world. ArtBob aims to strengthen the base of art in the kingdom by empowering and educating local artists, provide them with the opportunity to showcase their skills, and this year witness the participation of more than 35 Bahraini artists. It's a beautiful venue for Bahraini artists to exhibit their artwork alongside international uh, talented uh, artists. Uh, you, and you get to meet those those uh, artists and galleries and you get to collaborate with them. But it's a beautiful venue, beautiful purpose. Actually, I am 30 years or 30, more than 30 years working in printmaking. But um, I'm searcher and uh, searching and see what's going on in the world. And I am one of this world, yani. And uh, But in this exhibition, I try to focus in my country more about the fish, about the thing which is I like, uh, which is around me. In its third edition, Art Bar presented a lineup of 15 galleries and 13 independent artists from 11 countries, each showcasing their different kinds of artwork. The purpose of the fair is uh, obviously to introduce a broader spectrum of international artists uh, to the people of Bahrain and uh, it's an absolute privilege for us to be able to participate and bring David's work over from London and put it in this new exciting context. A number of these works here are called Brothers and they represent two figures coming together uh, and the work in that capacity I think is perfectly fitted to this fair where we try to seek uh, a connection between Europe, where we come from, and of course this region uh, where we find ourselves today. The event reinforces Bahrain's position in the Gulf as a regional art hub, inspiring entrepreneurs, provide education and local skills development. Art Bob 2018 is an art fair that came with a mission to attract international galleries as well as develop Bahraini artists. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, met yesterday U.S. Secretary of Defense James N. Mattis at the BDF Officers Club. Defense Minister Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma and Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi also attended the meeting. The BDF's Commander-in-Chief welcomed the U.S. Secretary of Defense and his accompanying delegation, hailing the deep-rooted historical relations between the two countries and the continuous development these relations are witnessing in various sectors, most notably in the field of military coordination and cooperation. The meeting ended with both sides exchanging commemorative gifts. The Commander-in-Chief held a luncheon in honor of his guests. Also present at the meeting were the Director of the BDF General Command Headquarters, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Inspector General Major General Abdullah Hassan Al Naimi, Assistant Chief of Staff for Logistics and Supplies Naval Major General Yusuf Ahmed Malala, Commander of the Royal Bahrain Air Force, the RBAF, Air Vice Marshal Sheikh Hamad bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Assistant Chief of Staff for Operations Major General Ghanem Ibrahim Al Fadala, Head of Bahrain's Military Justice Department General Yusuf Rashid Flefel, along with a number of BDF senior officers. On the sidelines of Bahrain's participating in the 62nd session of the UN Commission on the Status of Women in New York, the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Khalid Ansari, participated in the high-level session on the financial inclusion of innovative practices and women economic empowerment. Al Ansari affirmed that the Kingdom had taken many initiatives to develop the national economy and increase growth rates, as well as a number of security measures to guarantee the development of individuals from job seekers to job leaders. She stated that Bahraini businesswomen own 43% of the total number of businesses in the Kingdom, emphasizing that this development resulted in the increase of Bahraini women entrepreneurs in various sectors. 
Al Ansari also attended the high-level ministerial session on women in media and information and telecommunication technology and their effect on developing and empowering women. She held the steps taken by Saudi Arabia through the National Transformation Program to support and empower women and guarantee their presence in vital sectors, commending the higher education level and specialized Saudi universities. Al Ansari also held meetings in New York with representatives from the International Bank, the European Union and the UN Women Authority. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim and Mullah, chaired the second coordination meeting of the Parliamentary Division participating in the 138th Interparliamentary Union meeting. The Council Speaker affirmed the importance of participating in such international meetings and highlighting the Kingdom's achievements. The meeting also discussed the preparations for participating in the International Parliamentary Committees. The Gulf Downstream Association was inaugurated yesterday at the Four Seasons Hotel. More in this report with Shogh Mohammed. The Gulf Downstream Association was inaugurated yesterday by the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, with aims of having the regional and global leadership be a platform and a forum that combines oil refineries, gas plants, distribution plants and petrochemical complexes in the GCC's oil and gas companies to address issues, review management, technical solutions, share practical experiences, best practices and developments, discuss the current status of the refining industry, and to review the practical experiences of successful development projects in different regions of the world. The idea of the association and the membership of it is to get sharing of knowledge, uh, sharing of experiences, uh, technology, um, and to also prepare the younger generation and adapting into the future of the refining industry, the petrochemical industry. A lot of assets are being built as we speak in the refining sector. Uh, Babco, as you know, has begun the construction of its largest expansion. Uh, this will add state-of-the-art process technology. Uh, the same is happening in Kuwait, uh, in Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and in Oman. And the amount of knowledge sharing uh, that is needed uh, to make sure that these assets are operated uh, today and by the next generation. When we look at different associations in the region, and I think we look now with great pride on the development and the launch of the GDA, the Gulf Downstream Association. A lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of great planning has gone into this, and I think this association will really be you know, the talking point, the meeting place, the very core of what's to happen for the downstream industry here. The GDA has formed eight specialized technical teams, including health, safety and environment, excellence in operation, reliability, integrity, technology, energy and manpower development, which were formed from the refineries of the founding companies of the association, as well as from the global consultancy firms, and are keen on having periodic meetings every three months to get a close view on what the refineries and the facilities of oil companies under the umbrella of the GDA are facing. This association uh, was a necessity in the region as, as much as the region is growing in downstream and I think it will provide a solid platform for exchanges, uh, bring all these units, uh, the massive investment that has been done in the region, all together exchange good practice, work with the people. It is very important that all the lessons learned from the industry are well traded among the partners. We, as Shell Global Solutions, will be extremely pleased to be part of this association through the technology that we provide, the service we provide. But I see tremendous potential for each refiner from learning each other for the best practices. GDA is the latest um, you know, organization in the Gulf that focuses on the downstream and refining and petrochemicals and, and other streams in the downstream. And being that this is the first conference under the name of GDA really makes it special because we want to be diverse, as diverse as the downstream industry uh, is all about and address many of the challenges. The key issues that we want to talk about in this conference are how are we addressing the challenges through innovation, collaboration and technology. There are also a number of planned conferences and exhibitions that will attract national and international expertise, 
including the GDA conference and exhibition, which will be held on the 23rd to the 25th of October 2018, under the patronage of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Prime Minister, and is expected to attract about 1,500 delegates and 200 speakers from 150 companies from 40 countries and more than 4,500 visitors. The inauguration of the Gulf Downstream Association is an indicator of the Kingdom of Bahrain's ability to host significant events, which of course contributes to the 2030 economic vision. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Mohammed. The events of Traffic Week 2018 set an example of community partnership that the General Director of Traffic attempts to promote through the work system of the Ministry of Interior. For this purpose, traffic forums and competitions are held in order to reinforce the traffic culture and achieve high levels of road safety. Ride safely is a fundamental principle that highlights the march of the General Directorate of Traffic towards employing all capabilities and overcoming obstacles to organize a traffic week that represents a society that is aware of traffic rules and regulations. The Traffic Week represents a nice start to raising the awareness of residents and expatriates, especially the youth and children, on the importance of road safety. It is pleasant to see all authorities expressing desire to participate in the Traffic Week. For example, the schools of the Ministry of Education yearly celebrates Traffic Week events. It also educates children and the youth about the importance of road safety and the avoidance of misbehavior on the street. This year's event will be remarkable, and the partnership with a number of authorities has its positive results, especially the University of Bahrain, where a number of competitions have been organized for which the youth are to benefit. And we support the youth and desire to direct their energies to benefit the community. Ride safely is the theme of the Traffic Week in which all relative government and private sector institutions cooperate in order to raise the society's awareness of traffic rules and to achieve the highest levels of traffic and road safety for all. You have the freedom to choose the color of your car, its type and the way to your destination. However, this freedom is limited. It should not infringe on the freedom and rights of others. Roads are like body veins, but these veins are blocked. Once an illness gets in the way, this illness is speeding using the cell phone while driving and running red lights. Excess of speed leads to death and carefulness and slowness maintains safety. The General Directorate of Traffic has set the best strategy and plan to shed light on the main role of all society members to maintain the safety from the dangers of the road. And before we end the news, here's a reminder of our top stories. His Master the King underlines the role of the U.S. administration in maintaining peace and security in the region. And His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirms that the Bahraini U.S. defense cooperation is effectively extended to the regional level to support peace and stability in the Middle East. And that's all from Bahrain International's News Center. From all the news team and me, Sharaqi, goodbye.